Now to our continuing series on inequality. NewsHour economics correspondent Paul Salman has been exploring its effects and tonight delves into the connection between wealth and health. It's part of his reporting, Making Sense of Financial News. The monthly meeting of ENG, the executive networking group, offering job search support for out-of-work Chicago area managers. I come out of a construction background. I'm a senior sales and marketing exec. I was in corporate real estate. I've been unemployed for over a year. I've been involuntarily retired for 18 months. I've been out of work for five and a half years. From six-figure incomes, putting them in the top 10% of America's income distribution, to chronically unemployed. A dizzying fall that's one more instance of widening economic inequality in America. These are people slipping out of the, uh, the middle class. Carl Bushman with a University of Chicago MBA now loads trucks part-time for UPS. I'm uh, helping get the packages uh, loaded up for delivery at 8.30 in the morning. Most here had severance pay and savings to cushion the blow. But there's no denying the status drop. Milt Haynes helped run information technology at a major drug company. You kind of stick your chest out. I'm an IT director at Abbott Laboratories. But now I'm just a nobody. I'm unemployed. I'm like a, a nobody. These folks used to experience inequality from the top, looking down. Now they're looking up. Leonard Lampkin once managed nonprofits. Well, I've been out of work for over 30 months. One of my friends said, you probably qualify for food stamps. Uh, you know, as you start to think about it, that's a scary thing from where I was three years ago. I was in that probably top 7% in terms of income. It's, it's relative. Peter Sturdivant, it's, it's a once thriving estimate. construction manager, hasn't worked in more than three years. When there's any reduction, it doesn't matter if you're here or up there, there's still the feeling of a reduction in status, the same feelings, we're still human. And if you lose status in the economy, that induces stress at every level, no matter where you start. Absolutely. A thousand miles away, someone you may remember. So this one's fun, and this one's fun. Ooh, what, what happened over here? And you feel like you stand out like a sore thumb. My house needs to be painted, the roof leaks, and I do feel ashamed because I feel like, so I'm bringing the value of their houses down. And that's very stressful. We've been following the story of this laid-off manager for quite a while. Denise Barrent, unemployed since 2008. No job prospects in sight. Her foreclosed house about to hit the auction block. And this spring, a diagnosis of breast cancer and hospital stays for extreme hypertension. For stress. So my blood pressure was um, out of control and they had to hospitalize me twice. Stress. An obvious product of losing your job, but a symptom, it seems, of something else as well, losing your status. Health and disease are the good and bad effects of where you are in the hierarchy, mediated by the effects of chronic stress. We first interviewed British medical researcher Michael Marmot on this program years ago. We see it for heart disease. We see it for some cancers, we see it for gastrointestinal disease, we see it for violent deaths. According to Marmot and colleagues, the stress of low status explains some otherwise puzzling statistics. The U.S. leads the world in health care spending, for example, yet in infant mortality we rank 47th, below Malta, Slovenia, Cuba. In life expectancy, America is 50th, six years less than Macau. In what do we lead the world? Obesity. And given our incomes, we're well up there in economic inequality. Richard Wilkinson suspects there's a connection. On lots of different me measures of health, more unequal societies seem to do worse. Also a British epidemiologist, Wilkinson is the co-author of The Spirit Level, which reports a strong correlation between inequality and poor health, society-wide. Societies with bigger income differences between rich and poor do worse on a whole range of measures. They have worse health, they have more violence, they have more drug problems, standards of child well-being are worse. And not just a little bit worse, says Wilkinson, sometimes way worse. 
perhaps uh, two or three times the level of mental illness as uh, the more equal countries? Because in uh, a more unequal society there is more status competition, we judge each other more by status, uh, and we feel more judged. I'm from this poor area, I'm from like where all the criminals are. At Nikisha Fullington's highly selective exam school in Boston, her classmates were a lot better off. I knew I was as smart as them, but I felt like my family, like where I come from, wasn't as good as like where they came from, basically. Did it make you feel bad to be considered lower on the ladder? Really bad. Like, um, I don't know how to explain. It's like a horrible feeling to feel like you're less than other people. And the harder you try to keep up, the more stress there is, physical, mental, and economic. Like since I went to like a uh, mostly white school, it's like their clothing was simple, but it cost more than like something that I can afford. But it's like you come to the black community and like they'll spend like their whole paycheck just to have that one thing that has like, let's say like polo, like the Ralph Lauren polo has become a really, really popular trend for like a lot of blacks. But no, there's a deeper meaning to why the people wear those shirts. So, Daquan yeah. Bradford also went to a mainly I white school, it's like lives in the inner city. It's like you want to buy all these items to, you know, fill this insatiable hunger of trying to be something you can't not be. Money becomes more important because it says what you're worth. Uh, so people in more unequal societies work longer hours, much longer hours. They're more likely to get into debt. They save less of their income. They spend more. Um, and all those uh, uh, issues to do with um, uh, how you express what you're worth uh, and the status insecurities and so on. Doctors Wilkinson, Marmot, and others point to data that all this status seeking takes its toll. In hypertension, for instance, blacks worldwide have rates of high blood pressure similar to whites. But in the U.S., 41% of blacks have high blood pressure, as compared to 27% of whites. At least some of that might be due to inequality. And as inequality grows, it arguably exacts a price from those higher up the ladder as well, who become more and more stressed about clinging to the top rungs. MIT economist Frank Levy. As the economy looks more and more unequal, then, you know, upper middle class parents are going berserk trying to get their kids into a position to get the brass ring. Putting more and more time into kind of pumping up their kids, extra courses, extra activities, so on and so forth. And, and lower income families just don't have the resources to do that. But is inequality really bad for all of us? Or might it perhaps provide some benefits in the long run, even for the have nots? Daquan Bradford grew up near the bottom. We couldn't pay the gas and light bill. So it was in a situation where we had to use candles and, you know, it was kind of dark, but it was the winter time, so it was kind of cold too. So what we had to do is we had to kind of huddle as a family. But rather than make him feel bad, he says, the disparity he experienced going to school in an upscale Boston suburb fueled his ambition. I was eavesdropping on a conversation about, you know, their families owning businesses, how they live in this nice mansion. And then I felt, in a, in a strange sense, it was a mixed feeling of admiration and envy. So with that, I took on a role of this is why I have to succeed. This is why I have to work harder because they have something that I don't have. So I need to work harder to actually get to that level. Inequality in the future it can be a great incentivizer. University of Chicago economist Harold Ulig, originally from the much more equal economy of Germany. You can imagine two people, you know, one is working hard and one is just lazy and goofing off. And suppose they both get the same thing, you know, down the road. I mean, wouldn't the hard-working person say, why am, why am I doing that? So inequality motivates people to be inventive, to work hard, to pursue a career, to pursue an education. This is the argument that to make the rich work harder, you need to pay them more. To make the poor work harder, you need to pay them less. Again, Dr. Wilkinson. And of course, if you actually look at how people do in different societies, the chances of moving up socially for poor children are much higher in the more equal countries. Um, and in the US, the chances are particularly low. Uh, we sometimes say, if you want to live the American dream, you should move to, to Finland or Denmark, which have much higher social mobility.
Meanwhile, for these jobless executives west of Chicago, the dream is to regain lost income and status. So I just keep going, keep going. South of Boston, Denise Barron's dream is to keep from losing it all. Words can't even describe how stressful it is. And you know, and you feel like, where is there the light at the end of the tunnel? Denise Barron simply doesn't know. And neither, as it turns out, does anyone else.